Welcome to the bridging course, uh, which takes you from GCSE mathematics to GCE, which is often referred to as A-level, of course, mathematics. The purpose of this bridging course is because there is a huge leap between from the GCSE maths to GC to, to A-level to GCE maths. And it is probably the biggest leap of any of the GCSE subjects that you will study. Um, so what the purpose of this course is, is it's really, in a way, it's a sort of taster A-level course in which I cover um, quite a few topics, but really it's a more of how these topics are going to feel and seem very different at A-level than from GCSE. So there is a ton of algebra in A-level, a lot more than there is at GCSE level. And a trigonometry is also involved um, hugely in both um, applied maths, um, mechanics, and also uh, it could come into pure maths as well. And of course, calculus is, is the big topic that you won't have studied at GCSE. Um, unless possibly I think it comes into the I GC, G, GCSE. But the point is that all of these topics um, also cover sequences and series, uh, the remainder theorem, which is all algebraic, really. But the purpose of this is to show you how all these topics are connected. So connections is really, really important. When I was on teaching practice uh, many years ago, I will never forget the tutor who was teaching us, telling us about what he perceived mathematics to be. And I have agreed with him all my mathematical sort of teaching career. And he said the thing that's really, really, really vital and important in understanding and studying mathematics is to understand the connections between all these ideas. Because once you understand how algebra is connected to trigonometry, how trigonometry is connected to calculus, how calculus and algebra are connected and all these things, you start to think as a mathematician. You start to think in a, in a way where you're looking for those connections, a little bit like looking for clues. What information have we got? What have we got to find? What can I do with the information that I've got? Uh, I teach all my students this way as well, even at GCSE level, I say, OK, just think of those three questions. What have I got? What can I do with what I've got in terms of the information given? And what is my goal here? What have I got to discover or create, you know, uh, figure out what have I got to calculate? So I hope this serves as a useful uh, bridging course. I hope it serves uh, and goes some way to connect and cross that bridge, which is massive. Uh, between GCSE and A-level, um, you do need to know really everything you've done at GCSE. You need to be studying, revising again um, in order to be able to use those uh, topics at A-level fluently and confidently and competently. Because everything that you know and that you studied at GCSE is basically assumed at A-level. The other difference, the major difference, is that you will, uh, you are required at A-level to answer questions much more quickly than you would have done at GCSE level. So uh, when you're doing a paper, an exam paper at A-level or questions, um, there is much that will be assumed that you can make those connections very quickly. Um, one last thing before I go and before you start looking at the first uh, video. I would do them in order. In one way, the order um, doesn't matter that much as long as the individual subjects you follow in order. But I think uh, I've put them in the order in which I, th I think is going to be easiest to, to um, access and, and to understand those connections. But one last thing, and this may sound like you've heard it a thousand times, but believe me, I have tutored students, A-level students, who struggle with their tables, their times tables. And that actually is still a huge hindrance at A-level. So that may sound like a trivial thing, like, oh, you know, but many, many, many A-level students still do not know 
their times tables. And by times tables, I don't just mean reciting them. I mean, if you see a number, you immediately know all the factors for that number. So if you see the number 42 or 64 or uh, 135, immediately you will be able to write down, hardly without thinking, all the factors for that number, several multiples and the connections that that number might have with other numbers. You also need to be able to really dig into your number bonds and think, OK, 135, what do I add to that to make 200 or 3000 or 500? Be quick with those connections. Train your brain. Your brain will grow the more that you use it in this particular fashion. Like any muscle, it does grow and it is possible for you to do this. And that's the most important thing you have to tell yourself. You can do maths. You are a mathematician. You might not feel like it right now. You might not feel like it in first term or second term. But if you keep putting one foot in front of the other and you follow these uh, videos and then from there you start to use that as a springboard to study. The more you study, the more you practice, the more you continue to um, look at these types of questions, it will start to click. I guarantee that. It all depends on how much work you're willing to put in. You put the work in, you put the time in, then guaranteed at some point it will click and you will be amazed at your progress. Trust your brain, give it exercise. So I know this sounds ridiculous, as well. it doesn't sound ridiculous, but I know this may have been said to you often, but seriously, you know, you do need to exercise as well, physically exercise, because your brain is a muscle like anything else. It needs air, it needs oxygen, it needs sleep. So all of those things come into it. It's a whole thing, this, isn't it, study? So I hope this is a helpful course. I hope that it helps to bridge that gap. And good luck with all the videos. And uh, I hope that they're, they're useful to you. Thank you. And uh, hopefully I shall see you soon back with beginning um, an actual A-level course because I am planning to continue this into A-level itself. OK, that's all for now. Uh, all the best.